There are some amazing prompts out there and it can actually be a little overwhelming the number of prompts. There are literally videos out there that say like, I've tested 168 prompts and here are the 53 best prompts. And really, when it comes to working with the AI, there are only a few prompts that you need to get the most out of it. Now I will add a caveat to this and say that with AI, it's going to be a lot more about the dialogue and the conversation you generate with the AI, which is of course going to be very different from one prompt to another. So it's not like you're only gonna be using these seven prompts and that's it. You're gonna be using these seven prompts as starters. And then from there, you'll be able to iterate and have a conversation with the AI to the point that you can get what you want. So with that in mind, let's talk about the seven most important prompts that you can use to write an entire book from scratch. Let's get into it. The first prompt that you're going to need is a brainstorming prompt of some kind. Now this first one, I don't actually have a whole lot of specific examples. And the reason for that is because it can take so many different forms. And I'm gonna have a future video coming up pretty soon about some advanced brainstorming prompts that you can use, but there's literally an infinite number of ways to brain brainstorm. However, there are two things in particular I think everybody should need in the brainstorming phase, and that is a premise and a ending. And so a premise could be something simple like, give me 10 premise ideas for a, let's just say epic fantasy dragon shifter book. And then from there, it will give you a couple of different options. Once it has given you the premise, you can ask for an ending. The reason I like to ask for an ending is to, first of all, make sure the AI knows where we're going. Because if it doesn't know where we're going, the output tends to be not as good. If it does know where we're going, then it can feed, seed in little bits of foreshadowing for that ending. It can help construct a tighter plot. Now, of the options it gave me here, I really liked this one here, number six. A former dragon hunter dis discovers he's part dragon. He must reconcile his past deeds with his new identity following a trail of clues to prevent a calamity that threatens both dragons and humans. And interestingly enough, the AI also gave me some style notes. Uh, so these are like themes. It looks like this giving us moral ambiguity, interconnected threads of destiny, a hero's internal struggle. So I'm going to take this premise and the style notes might as well and then say, given the following premise... Give me, we'll say, five possible endings to this novel. And this is a good way to brainstorm the ending. All right, it has now given us a couple of different endings here. The one I liked the most, or at least the one I thought was most interesting, was this one here. The protagonist struggle leads him to realize a, leads him to a realization that his dragging hunting past was not entirely misguided. He sees the necessity of controlling the dragon population for the greater good of, of both species. He returns to hunting, but a new with a new philosophy targeting only those that threaten the balance. The ending remains morally ambiguous as readers question whether he's fallen back into his own ways or found a new path. And I liked the moral ambiguity of this particular ending, so we're going to run with it. As you're going, you're going to want to be taking notes and taking these little bits that you like out of it and moving on and putting it into a separate document. And another thing as well, as you go through each step of this process using these seven prompts, you're going to also want to make sure that you are editing, editing these things to your satisfaction. The reason for this is because the AI tends to be a lot more general. It does sometimes produce gems, but in general, you're going to want to have that human connection, that human authorship that can really make it shine. You're gonna, it, it helps with specificity and things like that. And so you wanna make sure you're getting that in place. But let's go ahead and move on to our second most important prompt of the seven, which is the synopsis prompt. And it looks something like this. Given the following premise and story information, give me a highly detailed synopsis for a, and then you insert your genre here. I'm gonna say epic fantasy dragon shifter story in the traditional three act structure each act should be clearly labeled and should build toward the ending i've described and then from here you add in the information you've gathered so far which i've got here and i'll just replace this little bit here with the premise the ending 
and the style notes that it gave me as well. And then hit enter and it should give us a detailed synopsis. And now it has given us this synopsis, which absolutely looks fantastic. And it used the three act structure like I gave it. So it's almost given us a detailed outline here, but we can go ahead and increase this, the, the complexity of the outline as well, which leads us to the third prompt, which is the outlining prompt. And that outlining prompt can look something like this using the following synopsis. And I'm going to actually just say the above synopsis, but you could just paste it in there. Create a detailed summary of the story, fleshing out additional details and breaking it down into parts using the, and then you add your outlining method of choice. Now, you might have your own outlining method of choice that isn't something that the AI knows. AI tends to know the big ones, the hero's journey, save the cat, romancing the beat, a whole bunch of these different outlining methods that people use. But if you don't have one, you can just provide your own. And I'm doing that here with the 24 novel chapter outline, which I have a detailed summary of here that I've written an article about on my website. You can check that out below. And then so for my outline method of choice, I'm going to say the 24 chapter novel outline summarized below. And then you paste in the information about the outline, what should be happening in the outline. And then it'll take that synopsis and turn it into a more fleshed out chapter outline. I will point out again that if we were doing this right, I would go through that synopsis that it has already given me. And I would very carefully add in my own human touch. For instance, it's talking about this big calamity thing. And it's not very specific about what that calamity is. And so that's a good example where I would want to figure that out and put that into the synopsis so it was very clear and defined what the calamity is. Otherwise, it's just going to stay rather general. The same is true here for the outline that it's giving us here. Every chapter, it does give us a brief summary of what's in that chapter, but you might have specific things you want to happen at certain times. You might want to split some of these chapters in two or combine them together. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. This is just a starting point so that you can then go in and add your own touch. All right, now that it has given us this information, we can move on to another favorite of mine, and that is the character prompt. Now this one isn't necessarily necessary, depending on how you like to write, but I find that the character tends to be one of the most important aspects of a good story. And so I want to just include a prompt on character so you can understand how it goes. We've, it's already established that there's a character named Thalric here. And so we, the character prompt looks something like this. Write a character profile about the protagonist. You could also do antagonist or mentor. But since we're just doing the protagonist for this prompt, I'm going to delete the, those bits of this novel. And then I'll just add his name so that AI is clear who, who I'm talking about. And you could insert the synopsis here if you were starting off with a fresh chat, but since we've been going through the synopsis, it already knows all of the information I could give it. And so I'm just gonna delete that bit. And then you could say, here's what we know so far about the characters. You could insert anything you know about the character here or anything that you would like this character to have, any particular quirks that you've already got in your head. Otherwise, you can just delete this bit here. And then you could say also say, include the following elements. And I could, you could give it like physical description, backstory, all of those things. I'm going to leave that blank. So really, this is a very simple prompt and it could uh, go with that and come up with its own character profile option. All right. Now that we have a character established and you could repeat this process for multiple characters and always, as always, be sure to go through and edit this to be how you like it. For instance, it gave us the eye color, deep green, hinting at his dragon lineage, all right? That's fine. Maybe you would want it to be deep green with flecks of red or something unique because it's just making this stuff up based on what it has been trained on. And the training data means it tends to default to something kind of obvious. And so you want to add that human touch in, into it. But the next step is to do the story beats. Now this is a very important step um, before you get to the final prose because the story beats are where you establish what is specifically happening in the chapter. And if, it, if the AI does not know what specifically happens in that chapter, the results are going to be really bad. 
And so the prompt will look something like this. Take the following chapter summary and generate a list of 12 highly detailed action beats for a script with additional story information to fully flesh out the chapter. Make sure to always use proper nouns instead of pronouns. And I've done a video recently where I was developing the story beats for each of for a chapter of one of the novellas I'm writing right now. And I go into a little more detail about why I say each bit that I do here. But basically, this is the prompt that I use. And you can also make this 15 beats or 20 beats or, or 6 beats, whatever you feel is appropriate. But then we have to go and get the chapter information. So if we go up here and get chapter 1 from our outline, and ideally you should have fleshed this out a little bit more on your own because this isn't much information for it to go on. And we give it Thalric, a seasoned dragon hunter, fails in a hunt, revealing in a growing revealing a growing disillusionment with his profession and an inexplicable connection with the dragon he slays. And so now it should give us 12 beats to use for this particular chapter. And it has now given us 12 very nice story beats. These are actually not too bad, but as with everything you want to make sure it stands up to your standards and that everything is specific. But the next prompt Prompt number six, and this is another one that's a little bit more vague, but it is possibly the most important one on this list, is a style prompt. Now, style prompts can vary wildly depending on what you do, and it's something that you are likely to be kind of developing your own style prompt as you go along. You'll start to notice things that the AI does that you don't like, and so you'll include in your style prompt to not do those things. Or there might be things that you do like and you put it in your style prompt to do those things and you'll be slowly crafting your own personal style prompt that you start to use more frequently. And I've seen these go on for hundreds of words in some cases. You can have a 500 word style prompt and uh, as long as you can fit it in with the type of AI software you're using, it can definitely work. Here is a sample style prompt that I could use for this particular novel. I could say first person past point of view of Thalric, show don't tell, deep point of view, realistic dialogue, stronger verbs, lots of conflict, drama, and description, avoid mushy descriptions and dialogue. This is a good example of a sh short and succinct style prompt, but you can get much longer as well and even get into explanations about what, e what each of these things look like to you so that the AI actually has a better idea of what it means. Now, if you're using Claude or Pseudowrite, you'll want to keep the, these something like this. And especially with Pseudowrite, you want to keep it concise because you only get 40 characters for your, or 40 words, excuse me, for your style prompt. But one of the nice things about ChatGPT is you can come up here to custom instructions, give it your style prompt here under custom instructions, and you only have to keep this under 1500 characters, which it's a lot more room than you get in Pseudorite. Then hit save, and now you don't even need to include the prompt here. You can just continue on with the prose. Which brings us to the seventh and final prompt on this list, which is constructing the prose. Now, I tend to have very complicated prose prompts. They look something like this. I write 1,000 words of a chapter. I usually don't expect it to actually write 1,000 words, it's, but I, I say that so it'll stretch a little bit using the following chapter details. So we can put in genre, which in, in this case is epic, fantasy, dragon, shifter. You can put the tone, which is, let's say, dark, which is a, perhaps a little too general. You can put point of view here, which is actually in my style prompt, so I'm going to delete that. You can put the setting, but since I'm not really doing this for real here, I'm just demonstrating we're going to take that out. You can put in your key characters. I'm just going to say, because it already did the character profile on Thalric and knows who that person is, I'm going to just put the name here. But understand that you could paste a, a summary of your character prompt in here to give it more information about that character. And then I say, story beats to cover. And usually for one of these prompts, I give it two to three story beats per prompt, and then I keep going with more story beats. So if we come up here and get these first three story beats, I'll just place them under here. And now it has everything it needs to begin writing the prose. 
and we've already entered in our style guide so let's go ahead and see what it gives us so we get the opening paragraph thalric's hands moved deftly as he sharpened his blade the soft scraping sound echoing in the dimly lit room his face a map of scars and determination was illuminated by the flicker of the solitary candle, yet in his eyes a weariness had settled like shadows lurking in the, once, in the depths of a once vibrant forest. The weight of years of dragon hunting lay heavy on him, a mantle that grew increasingly burdensome. Not bad, right? Obviously there's a lot of exposition in here, there's, it's already getting a little bit mel melodramatic, but this is something that could be fixed if you go in and really fix up those story beats yourself to make them exactly what you want them to be. Those are my seven most important prompts that you need to write a book from start to finish. You can literally go and complete the entire book this way. And I'll see you in the next video.